Welcome back to Casa Refine. Today I'm sharing how I created these large cement orb sculptures for any vignette. Plus, I'm sharing a very, very special surprise, so keep watching to the very end. So let's just dive right in. Hula hoops, some call it a toy. I say we can make orbs with these. And I gotta be honest with you, I cannot hula hoop to save my life. I guess these hips don't lie, or they do lie, rather, I don't know. Now, of course, I will be using some hula hoops for these. I actually got these at Dollar Tree, which are pretty affordable. I'm going to be drilling a little hole here for, since this is plastic, it should be pretty easy to do. And then I'm gonna insert these machine screws. So of course I drilled my holes, I actually went a little bit larger than the size of the bolt so that it fits in nicer. And one trick I found was to use this clamp to sort of clamp down, I think this is PVC, so this is going to make the bolt insert a little bit nicer and not be so bulky. Well I did six hula hoops and like they're not staying put, like I move them around and then they kind of sometimes clump together. Also, it's kind of an oval shape. I'm thinking it just needs some hoops going the longitude way or latitude way, depending on how you see it. For the slightly larger orb, I essentially repeated the same thing. However, for this one, I also will be adding some sort of in the longitude way, right? In longitude or lat? Oh gosh. But basically the same thing as such. I'm going to be honest with you, I'm just not feeling this project anymore. Like, I'm not going to give up on it, but I'm just going to set it aside and maybe I'll come back to it in the future, but it's just, I can tell it's going to look like crap in the end. Like, I'm not even kidding. Lopsided and I don't know. Let's just move on to the next one. Maybe I gave up on those too soon, but I'm just keeping it real with you. So now let's move on to the next set of orbs using some balls. Now in my first video, I got introduced to this technique and kind of explored different things. I loved it. Then I made these cement pots, but now so I picked up a yoga ball here. I remember I had one that I actually used in my other orbs and in the large pots, but I cannot find it to save my life. So I'm going to be using this new one that I got. This one is the 65 centimeter one, but you know, there's different sizes out there. Maybe even like a smaller balance ball or such because I want to make it feel kind of sculptural um, and I think it would pair really nicely with some planters that I have in the garage. Now for these sculptures I really am taking inspiration from nature and want to have some fun playing with different forms and colors. I filled these buckets with some water. This is going to give it a heavy base just so that the heavy ball on top will move around. Now the first step is to prepare for the cement application. Now we're going to take our inflated balls. Doesn't really matter what balls, honestly. I like these because I will be able to reuse them in the future. I'm also taking some round floral hoops that will be used for the base. This will come explained a little bit later on, but for now, let's apply this cement mesh fiber tape. This is used so that the cement has something to hold on to. This did take some time, but I ensured that the entire ball was covered not a peak of rubber peeking through. Also note, I left the inflatable hole out so that I can deflate this later. Now this is a multi-day project and for convenience, I took things into the garage even though this will be messy, but you know, laying some tarps. And guess what? I made a couple more using some beach balls. Low key, I feel like I'm making piñatas. So last night I finished wrapping up the ball with the cement mesh tape. I actually did a couple more spheres, orbs, that I think I might sell. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But here we go. So I'm going to start applying my first coat, my first layer of cement, which is going to be a slurry. What's in the slurry? Well, I'm actually using some all-purpose cement and a one to two ratio of bonding adhesive to water. Now, mind you, I'm not really measuring anything here per se. I'm kind of just throwing things together as this is what has worked for me in the past. So this is my best estimate, I would say. Honestly, the more bonding agent, the better. This is just the glue that helps basically each cement layer bond to each other. And I'm going for sort of a paint consistency. This step is pretty straightforward as I'm just making sure I have great coverage on the entire ball. Ideally, I would want to cover the entire surface of the ball in one day, but given the size of this, I went ahead and let that dry overnight or cure and then finished applying the remainder side 
the following day, again with the slurry mix. Now that they're all covered, we're just gonna let that cure overnight before moving on to the next layer of cement. Now that that's all dry and cured, we are ready for a second coat, which is going to be similar. However, we're adding some sand. So 1 to 1 ratio of sand and cement plus 1 to 2 part ratio of bonding adhesive to water. Again, kind of estimating here. And really, we're going for sort of a grout consistency. This is going to be thicker, which of course is produced by the sand added. Now, when applying it onto the existing cement orb, we want to make sure that it is wet so that it goes on a little bit smoother. In my experience, I found it best to use a trowel or sort of a utility knife to apply this, but I also tried experimenting with a brush, which can potentially work, but again, just making sure that you keep the ball moist. There's a lot of surface on these orbs, so I am working in smaller batches when it comes to making mix. Also, we don't want this to start drying out. I will say there is a little bit of cracking here. You see that? That is because there's just a lot of weight on the ball right now. And the layer underneath isn't as strong, so that's why there's a little bit of cracking. That's okay. That will be fixed in the next couple of layers. And then we'll be turning the ball over as well. But for now, we just have to let it do its thing. In the meantime, let's work on the rest of these orbs. I gotta say, it's hot as heck. When working with this, I always find it easier to work in a space where there is no direct sunlight because if it starts to dry out too fast, it'll start to crack. Um, and we want the curing time to be not fast, basically. Working in a garage is perfect, but of course this makes a mess. Okay, so it's the next day and the spheres are pretty much dry. I'm gonna flip them over and finish doing the rest of the side and then I might do a lighter coat on what I already did yesterday. I'm thinking for the smaller ones, it might not need another coat, but I'm still gonna do it anyways. When I turn them over, as you can see, there's still an area that needs to be covered, so I'm mixing up another batch. I will say with these orbs, the more layers, the better, the more resistant and heavier they will be. So in the transition here from the old layer to the new layer, I find it easiest to just wet it a lot, and then it starts to kind of flow into each other, and then I just rub it with my hand. Oh, what fun it is to cover these things with lots of cement. It ended up being a lot of work, especially because I'm doing a lot. But you know what? I'm very looking forward to this because now we're going to start transitioning these into sculptures, to pieces of art. Thinking of adding maybe a little bit of a ribbed a fluting effect or potentially some sort of spikes or something else so i actually picked up some of this rope that i will be using on the larger ball maybe the smaller ones too we'll see but i'm gonna start off with the large one and i'm going to sort of kind of wrap the ball around with this I slightly underestimated the amount of rope that I was going to require, but in the end, I ended up picking up two packets of this rope for all of the orbs that I will be doing today, but to adhere it to the orb, I'm using a combination of Gorilla Glue and some hot glue. That Gorilla Glue is really going to give it some strength and like hold it on there, and then that hot glue is going to hold it in place temporarily while that Gorilla Glue cures, which will take probably overnight. 
as we watch this i'm gonna take this time to invite you to come say hello over on social media i'm on tiktok instagram that's casa underscore refined come say hi let me know what you're working on also check out my blog casarefine.com also my store casarefineshop.com all of it is linked in the description I'm a little sweaty um but for this larger one i'm just gonna wait a little bit for that glue to dry and then i'm gonna turn it over and finish gluing the bottom side in the meantime here's what i have planned for these smaller orbs so i have a couple of these little cement i call them dots that i made i've just been waiting to use these first a project and i think this might be it i also have these larger ones so i'm thinking of potentially doing I was playing around with the smaller ones, but I think I like the larger ones. Um, I also like that they have sort of this flat end, which design-wise, I think is a little bit more proportionate and interesting to these orbs. So I'm going to do that for this one. And for these other ones, I'm thinking of maybe doing some with that and then potentially rope. Again, I'm using a combination of the Gorilla Glue and some hot glue to hold it into place. This is really turning out quite nicely. It's kind of looking like a moon or maybe even, I don't know, what is it looking like? I also created some fluted orbs using some of that extra rope I had on hand. I removed the plug and just let it deflate. I gotta say though, in my first video, I didn't really show how I took it out and some people were pissed. So here I'm just showing you, you literally just take it out. The cement doesn't really stick to the plastic or the yoga ball here, as you can see. So really it's just deflating it and taking it out. But now we're left with the hole at the bottom, which can invite all sorts of critters in there. We don't want that. So I'm just gonna take a scrap piece of plywood that I cut a circle with. Don't judge me, it's not that perfect. And again, gluing it with some glue, of course. Then to place something heavy on top to clamp it down and finish up the rope process. Gotta say, que maravilloso. I love this. También saludos a toda mi gente. Gracias por ver mis videos. He visto sus comentarios. Ojalá pueda agregar subtítulos en español o tal vez abrir canal en español. Pero por ahora, gracias por todo el apoyo. You can see it's actually pretty secure here. There's a couple of loose hot glue strings that I gotta get rid of, Just rubbing it with my hand. But overall, it's pretty great. I think I'm ready to do the next coat of cement. This next coat is basically the same as the previous one. However, I'm just making it a tiny bit more liquidy so that I can brush it on here. This is easier to get into those nooks and crevices, making sure, of course, that I'm maintaining the ball moist. Ah, they're looking so good. I'm so happy. Okay, so at this point, I'm actually going to do one final coat, um, but this time it's going to be Henry's Feather Finish. This is going to kind of smooth out any imperfections, fill in any gaps, and make sure that the rope has full coverage. I could probably do another coat of the other sort of sand mixture, but I don't know. It's a lot of work, and I think it's, it's definitely sturdy enough, and these especially the smaller ones are definitely they have plenty of cement so let's go ahead and do that Ooh, it's been a minute since i hit up my friend henry here well i'm be using that plus some bonding adhesive and water don't know if the bonding adhesive is necessary but i'll be using it covering the surface of all of these sculptures which overall this step is optional but it makes everything smoother okay so it is the next day the orbs have dried the texture is a little bit smooth but there's still some texture which i love i'm just going to finish this last one that i had done and put some henry's on there and then i think i'm going to start doing some painting for these while we wait for that i made something wonderful that i think you're going to love this 
is the Arlo cement footed bowl. Isn't that beautiful? I actually made this and it's actually part of my cemento collection on my shop, shop store, CasaRefineShop.com and it's now available in cloud gray. I think the black, the slate black color is sold out, but this one is another beautiful color, has sort of these beautiful brown tones, of course some gray tones in there and some white, and it just has this beautiful ornate patina that's even good to further uh, be enhanced over time. You can use this to style your shelves or any decor vignette that you would like. You can hold your jewelry or any sorts of things. Such a versatile, cute little footed bowl and it's heavy too. So be sure to check this out on CasaRefineShop.com. I will put a discount code down in the description box where you will also find some vintage and pre-love decor along with my other handmade cement decor pieces and more things coming soon. So thank you so much for the support and I hope that you enjoy this. This is really fun. I love it. Finally time to do some painting. I'm going to be using this stuff for the large ball. I've been wanting to try this for a while. This is sort of rust, like a rust effect. So I think it's like literal iron rust that I paint on a surface and then I like spray the activator, which basically produces like an immediate tarnish, I think, like, like rusted iron. I got two packets of this because that's all they had at the store. It's actually kind of expensive, but it looks really beautiful and I think it will definitely add some interest to this. And if it doesn't look good, or there isn't enough for something, I could um, just paint over it or something, you know? This is a three-step process. Number one is the primer, then is the iron, and finally the rust. I'm gonna start off with the primer, and not me being delusional thinking that this is gonna be enough for this entire orb, because I actually ended up using the two packets, so two of these little bottles, covering it up. I actually added some water in there to really stretch this out because I really could not. In the meantime, let's work on these orbs that look like they came from a dungeon. These, I'm actually working with some cement stain, which maybe we'll get to in a future video, but this could easily be achieved with acrylic paint. Works well on cement, but here, essentially, it's all about layering. And so I'm starting off with some black, then sort of some medium brown, and just really allow for that color variation to pull through and to create a beautiful patina effect. First coat of primer has dried Says I'm supposed to be doing two coats. Literally, there was not enough to even cover this part. So I kind of watered it down. So I'm not even sure if this is gonna work. I mean, I already am using two packages. This is turning to be actually very expensive and I'm kind of regretting getting that metal effects thing because I think that's just more for like small projects, not a big ass ball. So nonetheless, we'll persist and I'm going to now apply this, which is the second coat, which is the iron. Things are starting to get interesting now. This could go wrong, this could work, we'll find out. I'm trying my best to trust the process and also I took this outside to finish it up. So the iron coat is now dry and I'm gonna finish it up with this, which is a spray called Rust. This is the Rust Activator, which is going to cause the patina effect. So I'm going to spray this around. I'm low-key a little bit nervous because like, what if I hate it, you know? I was so nervous. I cannot even tell you how nervous I was because what if it looked like crap? But I sprayed it on there and initially it wasn't doing very much. But according to the instructions, this should take about 40 minutes for it to fully activate and do its thing. So here we have it. I think it, there's still a little bit of drying time left, but here you can clearly see some of that patina showing through color variation. Um, and I'm not 100% in love with it, but I do like it. And I think I'm just gonna let it be. Maybe I might do something with it different in the future. However, I do need to check and see if I need to seal this or something. We can't forget about the little ones here. I'm using an acrylic mixture situation, just acrylic paint and some water. But really the goal here is for these little guys, they're not that little though, to do all the talking because they're just so beautiful and elegant. These sculptures are going to be a little bit more of an earthy tone and I'm kind of just using my hands, kind of rubbing in different shades and really just having some fun here. I am loving these. And by the way, these are not limited to just outdoor use. These could be brought inside to add a sculpture element to any vignette. The possibilities are endless, maybe next to a fireplace or something. Uh, 
A sealer is important to prolong the life of these beauties and I'm going to be using this Thompson's water sealer. I'm actually doing a couple of coats, allowing each coat to dry in between, then finishing up with a matte spray to really get a matte finish. And they're going to look like they're dry once the things dry. And with that, that pretty much wraps it up for our orb sculptures. This is the final result. I absolutely love how they turned out. They have some beautiful texture. They have beautiful design. I love the sculptural element. And guess what? A special surprise for you. Some of these are available now on my store, gasarefineshop.com. I will link these down in the description box if you want to get your hands on some of these. Of course, it's a lot of time and work to produce these, but they're so wonderful. And if they sell, maybe I'll make more variations in the future. But I'm so happy with these. Let me know your favorite down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. These orbs turned out so much better than expected. Well, actually, I thought they were going to turn out fine, but I was kind of doubting the rust one for a minute, but it might be my favorite one. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to check out some of my cement pieces, including some of these, be sure to check out my store, gossipwayfineshop.com. I will link these and my other creations down in the description box. Oh, the sprinklers are turning on. Um, have a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next recommended video here somewhere. Bye.